Social action, sharing experiences in conflict, war, and climate change. In this second video presentation, we're going to look uh, at how to achieve social change in terms of community organizing. So we looked at how to achieve the how-tos in the first video presentation by examining agency. In this second one, we're looking at community organizing. Community organizing is a critical component of achieving any kind of social change. And so when we look at community organizing, we have to look at the person or group or organization doing the organizing. And, um, and then we better understand how it's done. One of the common themes that has come through these video presentations is that whether in terms of agency or community organizing, it's a bottom-up process. And you will hear this um, as we look at some of the climate justice and ecological change makers. Now I think if we look back to the past three decades, we will observe there's been a huge change uh, process, a huge wave of change uh, that has occurred because of the climate crisis and the environmental organizing, and it's affected all levels of human interaction. It's so slow and sometimes not very visible, so it feels frustratingly ineffective. But if we could construct a continuum, you know, a line, like a pole, of all the different nonviolent actions that we have seen, the different kinds, the different types, we may see on one side some of the interventions that are technological, technology that is being used at the household level like retrofitting or solar energy or heat pumps. Or we might look somewhere in the middle of our continuum uh, of nonviolent actions like peaceful resistance against gas fracking or oil pipelines, where there's been a lot of um, resistance by different local groups. Or we might look at the other extreme and see nonviolent action in terms of civil disobedience that really wants to upend capitalism and replace it with a more sustainable economy. So if you take all of these different kinds of actions, uh, you realize that they uh, give an impression of being wide-ranging and transformational. Now, um, what is noteworthy is how climate and activists are really pressing for change. So climate groups um, very often begin with small actions. I'm thinking here of that one climate striker that got out every Friday, just an adolescent, Greta Thunberg, who stood in front of the Swedish Riksdag parliament every Friday and gradually was able to transplant this idea across many, many countries where her influence was felt widely. And there we saw strikers coming out every Friday and still do. Um, this is what we call a circle of influence or a concentric circle that builds out from one action. And I think this is something that we have definitely seen uh, in the case of Greta Thunberg. We've also seen in terms of nonviolent action with regard to ecological actions and climate change, how spontaneous actions have become prepared actions. 
and how these prepared actions have created social movements. I'm thinking, for example, of Bill McKibben in his 350.org. This is an organization that favors divestment to fossil fuel companies and protects, um, uh, protests rather, uh, those governments who are, or, or banks who are subsidizing fossil fuel companies. And the protest is to say you should be uh, helping to subsidize uh, renewable energy projects, not fossil fuels. And sometimes those ongoing and consistent uh, movements start to disrupt, uh, for instance, uh, 350.org has been known to go into banks and disrupt their, their management. It's to make people aware, people who are coming to the bank and who are managing the bank, the gravity of the fossil fuel issue. So this is how spontaneous movements uh, become prepared movements and they become a habit and, uh, and a social movement. Another would be something like Extension Rebellion, which has called for emergency, climate emergencies. So the urgency of action by the general public and by policymakers, and they have really tried to push for national or city governments to legislate a transition, an energy transition, to net zero carbon and want it done now, urgently. I think this is another incredible example of the uh, building of uh, the actions from below which have had a huge effect uh, in changing the way people think. Last month, at the COP28 meeting in Abu Dhabi, in spite of the wall of opposition from oil and gas lobbyists and companies and many governments, climate activists continue to press their governments to phase down on fossil fuel. And I think this, is, um, this shows the power of this transformative change, which is beginning uh, and, and comes from bottom-up community organizing. Now, the ecological um, groups are aware of many of the tools of nonviolent action. And in fact, I think there's a growing awareness that not only do, does there need to be activists, but the community engagement piece is very important, that more uh, people, common ordinary people, have to join these campaigns and these nonviolent actions because it's not just about having a sufficient number of people, although that's important, but it's having people who understand why they're taking up a nonviolent action. If they're able to imbibe it and act it genuinely, and there's enough people you can find there is a tipping point. This makes us recall uh, Martin Luther King Jr. and the many pastors of black churches who were able to do the community education work repeatedly every Sunday in the process of giving um, solace and solidarity to people who were suffering intense Dis racial discrimination, and at the same time, they carried out actions. Those same churchgoers who were constantly hearing about uh, the nonviolent actions were the ones who had the lunch counter strikes. They carried out the bus boycotts, and these only worked the lunch counter strikes and the bus boycott boycotts because people participated and got involved. Even it, much of this happened, these actions happened after Martin Luther King came to India 
to study the Gandhian movement uh, method of organizing, and he took some of these techniques back. The Highlander Institute was one such institute that really gave education to people how to take up nonviolent action, but it was in the acting that was important, that building of capacity of the grassroots to act and to be engaged was, is the critical component of any community organizing. So the how to building from below, um, uh, starting small and building out, uh, being moving from spontaneous to prepared movement, having a community engagement, these are all the elements of community-based organizing. And I think if we looked at the global nonviolent action database, which you can find uh, on the net, there are many examples of different nonviolent actions. But unless one can really relate it to climate and ecological actors, it's very difficult to be able to bring that into action. And I think we need to have a more um, clear idea of the different methods that people have employed in order to have more. So as Gandhi said, you know, there is enough for everyone's need, but not for everyone's greed. And this continues to impel us forward to see that the community-based action needs to work towards a long-term structural change in the society if we're going to succeed. And that requires hundreds of different nonviolent actions. Thank you very much.